The first of our guests is a past pupil of St Bridget's Convent. She excelled at her advanced level examinations in 2015 and entered the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. Her university sport in life lies in speed over water as a prolific oars woman. Her years in the university crew led to emerging champions at the Sri Lanka University Games in 2019 and the Inter-University Championships in 2018. She has dominated the national stage as well, having won several medals at the Sri Lanka National Rowing Championship, even in the open category. To share her insights and to inspire, we have with us Upuli Edirisinghe. Also from the 2015 batch, the second of our guests finds her roots in Devi Balika Vidyalaya. Being highly successful in both academics as well as sports, she is redefining what it means to be an exceptional medical student. Having represented the basketball team of the faculty and the university since 2017, she was entrusted with the responsibility of leading the university team in 2019 and the faculty team in 2020. Her three years at the Sri Lanka University Games are decorated with two silver medals and a gold, as well as winning all the law med championships held as of yet and the intermedical faculty tournament in 2019. She was also selected for the Sri Lanka University basketball team in 2019. Representing the faculty netball and athletics teams as well is testimony to her diverse sporting talents. Her brilliance goes beyond the courts and grounds to even administration as she currently serves as the secretary of the Faculty of Medicine Sports Association. Also joining us today is Hasni Gunaratna. Welcome to the latest edition of Insights to Inspire, a project spearheaded by the Rotary Club of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. Many of us wonder how is it possible to balance such a hectic academic curriculum as the MBBS degree while maintaining sports, clubs and societies and pursuing your passions as well as having a personal life. It is indeed a mystery. But today we have with us two individuals who have cracked that mystery and we have the opportunity and the great privilege to pick their brains. It is my distinguished deep privilege to invite uh, Hasni Gunaratna Akka from the 2015 batch. Hello Akke, it's a pleasure to have you here. And we also have with us Upuli Edir Singh Akka, also from the 2015 batch. Thank you, thank you for being with us here today. So let's dive straight away into the questions that we'd like to ask these prolific people. personalities hasniaki so we all know you as the sports association secretary of our faculty you are also the captain of the basketball team of our university and you've also been a member of the sri lanka schools university basketball team so could you tell us like we we all you know we see the destination but we say that it's the journey that matters could you tell us where did your journey begin where did young hasniaka find her uh, find her roots in sports from school itself so uh, since then uh, back at school uh, i was uh, i did drama mostly drama uh, so i was a part of the drama club we did a lot of shakespeare drama and then uh, i played basketball as well uh, till like uh, grade 11 and i uh, was the school captain in the 2012 2013 uh, batch so uh, afterwards uh, yeah that was where when i started doing sports and afterwards i just uh, i honestly did not have a uh, huge hopes of uh, doing uh, uh, sorry sports in the university but somehow i ended up doing and i don't regret it at all it's okay um aka could you tell us a little bit more about you know your memories your achievements as a sportsman in university yes so uh, i started uh, playing basketball for the university in the year 2017 so i played for the university in Years 2017, 18, and 19. So 19 was my last year. Uh, that was when I captained the university team. Uh, so uh, obviously, I have a whole lot of memories uh, involved in basketball. So just to start off with, obviously, 2017 was the first year that I played for the university. So such a memorable year for me because that was when I got the real exposure to what I was going to experience in the future. So uh, then 2018 was the year that we won the championship. 
it's definitely a memorable year because we have been runners up to Rome for years and somehow managed to uh, get the championship that year. Uh, and in 2019 was the year that I captained and it was the Sri Lankan University Games this last year. Uh, so it comes once every three years. So that was memorable uh, for all, almost all the sportswomen and sportsmen in the faculty because it's a different experience. So uh, afterwards, um, and also playing with the team, uh, I do have a lot of great times that I spent. It's very nostalgic that now that I'm recalling them, uh, because now I've uh, stopped the sport for almost two years. I haven't been in the sport for almost two years, uh, but still we talk, we have you know we have phone calls, we call it each call each other. So it's. Uh, Great times that we had uh, back in 2017 when we used to go and play matches, play the board, literally stay for over 12 hours, have morning practices, stay during the day, and then again go back for evening practices. So, uh, and also little trips that we had with the team to Jaffna, to uh, lunch days, and a lot of good memories. So, yes, those were really good times, uh, and I hope we also had. Very, like similar experiences. Yes, oh, thank you, Akke. I mean, people say that university is meant to be the best five years of our life, right? And I think Hasni Akka is definitely living that dream that a lot of people have. So, Upali Akka, how about you? Do you also, you're an you're old woman and a part of our university uh, growing crew as well. So, did your roots also go back to schooling years like Hasni Akka or what was it like? Could you tell us a little bit more about your achievements? Um, how, how about university colours and any other achievements in a national level? Okay. 
um, so we have with us two ladies who have not only they're not just talking the talk they have walked the walk they've done it and they've shown that they are capable people so um, something that's very curious is like when people join university most of them just continue the same sports that they've done in school they are very afraid to spread their wings but we see that uh, Upuliyakka has actually started something entirely new and I know from experience like I've seen Ozman in our school they have a very hectic practice schedule so could you tell us um, how did you manage to pick up a very uh, a very challenging sport from the very uh, grassroots sorry grassroots level Hasnayaka, what about you? Who were your pillars of support? Yeah, so uh, my first year of playing basketball was 2017 uh, and I was lucky enough to have uh, one of my seniors from the medical faculty as the university captain. So uh, she was uh, very understanding and to have someone uh, who totally understand you, uh, understand what it means to balance a sport and medicine was really that, that was such a great support for me. So, uh, uh, other than that, my captains and my teammates, so they were very flexible enough to uh, let me join the practice a little bit late because usually we had back then we had lectures till 5 15 or something. So, uh, we had to, like personally, I think, really as well, we had to go and go for practices. We can't go for practices at 5 30 because it gets dark and we can't play at the courts. So, what happened was I, after my 4.15 lecture, I used to go for practices. So it was about like a 20 minute to 15 minute loss that I have from the practice. But uh, usually our practices are very strict. People have to be there by 4 o'clock. So if you come late, you have to you know, run a couple of laps, uh, maybe up and down the court or in the ground. So it was very you know, strict. But they were very flexible enough. They just let me join the practice at 420. Even if it's like a little thing, I just didn't have to be anxious about you know coming for practices because that was something very serious. When you're doing a sport, coming for a practice 20 minutes late, when your whole team is there practicing, it's it is something which makes you a little bit anxious, you know, to go and continue. So uh, they were really nice, they've helped me and there were times that uh, I've had like a lot of my exams and uh, study leads overlapping with the practices. So sometimes I could not commit as much as others did, uh, especially during those times. So they were really understanding of that. Uh, and also there were a lot of seniors in our faculty. Uh, it was really nice to go to uh, Colors Night to, to see your seniors from your faculty representing the university. There was a huge crowd in 2017 if I can remember. So um, those, all those seniors helped, helped me a lot, helped our batch, uh, students in our batch, sportsmen in our batch a lot to continue the sport because they had some experience uh, on what to expect and certain incidents or certain things, they, they've already faced that, like exams overlapping with inter-university games. So they just, you know, they told us what to do and what not to do. It was such a great support. So Mithriya, Kito, Shania, Kriya, there were a lot of seniors who helped me throughout, especially during my IDSS exams. Um, and also, uh, other than that, uh, a lot of seniors back in, uh, in the university team who were not players when I came to the team. They were senior players. They also continuously came as support. And those are kids I've never played with them, but still I, I know them, I've uh, talked with them, and they've helped me. So, uh, 
those are people who really helped me to continue the sport for three years. Uh, yes. Okay. So. Basically, every problem that a, a fresher would be facing, the seniors would have already faced, and they would be understanding. They would help us out. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that sometimes you had to miss lectures um, for practices. So how exactly did you balance your academics? And I think this is the the billion dollar question that everyone is wondering. Did the seniors also help you in academics as well, or how was it like? Uh, seniors, most of us, most of our seniors uh, had very uh, tight schedules because as you go along in this uh, degree it gets tougher and tougher it's like you really don't have time so uh, but what I felt was even uh, even them advising us on what to do was a huge help because we are absolutely lost at times like we don't know what to do where to start off with and whom we can talk to that those problems about Simple example is when I had this IPS exam, uh, I was, uh, it was during the study, actually I, I had the IPS exam and then I had the uh, community assessment program that we go to Amelipitya and then I had the engineering city games. So that was the year that we really bonded the championship, I mean knew that we were going to win the championship, we were really confident about it. So I really want to play that year and be a part of that experience. So I didn't want to stop playing basketball that year or the years afterwards. But uh, so I wanted to somehow continue along with my academics. But it was such a struggle because it was a bar exam; it was not easy. So I had to somehow manage time. But uh, so I talked to some of the seniors uh, in our faculty who told me what to do, what to do with who to go and talk to, uh, how to arrange practices, maybe how to get excuse. So that was such a great strength and uh, that problem, that issue was there for most of our batchmates and the whole support mechanism we included our batchmates as well because there were a lot of people who were going through the same thing in your batch and we would talk with each other, I it was a talk with Uli, we had like, you know, what to do, like how can we manage this, we've had those conversations since first year, since second year, it's continuously there because that's such a support mechanism. So yes, so a lot of seniors uh, helped along with making decisions on how to do practices, how to continue academics and how to do it in a proper way and basically what to expect when it comes to academics and when it comes to schools. Okay, thank you. Um, how about you, Kuriyaki? Now, you said that you have, there were times when you had six days out of the seven days you had practice, morning and evening sometimes. Now, that seems like a very hectic schedule to me and, and I might have chickened out. So, what kept you going, you know, uh, you know, just grinding through all of that work? So, um, Hasni Akke, you, you've achieved so much in terms of sports and if I'm not wrong, you got a first class for your IBSS exam as well, so that's as good as it gets, right? Um, so, basically, you have been able to manage sports with co-curriculars, it is not impossible. Um, if there is, say, a first year student and he, and he or she comes up to you and asks, um, Akke, um, 
why would I do sports? Like, what can I gain out of it? What would you tell them? Well, who want to start a sport, uh, I would say uh, the reason, there are enough and more reasons to start a sport. So, a lot of memories that you've gathered, I have I've had a lot of memories with the team and if someone asks me about my experiences in the university or during my faculty life, I would definitely say that playing basketball was one of the best decisions that I've ever made, although it was not my initial decision to do, to do a school. So uh, because of that, I've had like a lot of experiences as well as I've got to know a lot of people here in the faculty as well as in the university. Uh, so those little little things just made me somehow continue the school. So I would definitely encourage encourage anyone to continue a school, do a school, represent the faculty and the university. But uh, you have to be very selective and uh, knowing your capability, knowing how much you can uh, how, how much of work you can struggle along with academics and with sports. So I think that's very important for you to know how much you can basically cope up with. So, uh, but I would definitely 100% uh, recommend someone to do a sport or, or at least some sort of an extracurricular activity while at faculty because it really helps you calm yourself down just have a little uh, time off of the strenuous academic years. Okay, uh, if I can ask a follow-up question on that. Um, how else, how, how, no, you said that you know it gave you a lot of memories, it, you met a lot of people, uh, you met seniors and they helped you. Um, could you give me a, a reason uh, where sports would have helped you in terms of just being a better academic as well? Like, Do you think those skills are transferable? Yes, basically because you don't have a lot of time during the day. Yeah. You have to somehow work during the time that you have. Okay. Because after practices, now I used to have practices from four, like 4.30 up to like 8 o'clock. So after a whole session of strenuous basketball skill training and everything, it's difficult for me to go back, you know, at, to home at, at around 8 30 and study. It's difficult, it's sort of physically impossible at times. But somehow I had to do it and manage it because I did not have time other than, you know, go maybe study something afterwards. And uh, sometimes we did have casualty when we have major appointments, we had to come back for casualty at 8 o'clock and I used to have like surgery casualty I would never forget because we had we had casual like till 1 at 1 p.m. So going to practices at 4 o'clock, finishing that at 8, coming back and staying for casualty at 1 o'clock and somehow wake up in the morning and study this. Like I don't know now, I can't even imagine now I did that because uh, but somehow you try to manage it and you know walk, walk yourself through that. Now I have enough time but maybe I'm not committing as much because now I have free time somehow, right? I know that I do have free time, I know I can you know, manage so I sort of shift things back. But back then I did not have time to shift things back, I had to do it at that moment. But I know people who study just even to study late and you know, pass the exams. But what I have noticed is that I was never that person. I uh, had to uh, do my academics before, I had to go through things before uh, and somehow be familiarized with all the academic uh, things, not doing everything just before exams. So uh, I got to know my capacity, I got to experience different ways of studying to find a way that would sort of suit me and I think sports play a huge role. It's, it's actually a very common, you know, it's actually quite paradoxical. The people who have the least time actually get the most work done. That's something we've seen even in school, I've noticed. And uh, living example. <laughs> um, so, Upuliake, what about you? If you have any, you know, a final comment, one message that you could give your viewers, uh, most of them, you know, young aspiring students like me, what would you tell them? So, I, I used to live on quotes quite a lot when I was Kind of kept me going because uh, 
even though you think it's impossible. For me, now thinking back, it feels impossible. I don't know how I did it then. But it's not actually. Until you do it, you don't realize your potential. So, yeah, that's something I would like to say. After that very instructive and informative discussion, we are still not done with the Kuliaka and Hasniaka. Now we'll move on to the rapid fire round. Your first question What is one quality you wish your children never have? Being overconfident. Being overconfident. Your second question, if your house is on fire, what's the first position you would save? Okay. Right. Um, third question, um, what is the best compliment you have ever gotten? Um, how about Upulia Khan's this first? Okay. Um, if you weren't a doctor, what would you aspire to be? Oh, sorry, shall I ask that again? Sorry. If you weren't going to be a doctor, what would you want to be? Something in science, I think. Okay. Uh, maybe something mm -hmm. Probably something related to chemistry because I used to love chemistry. Right, okay. Um, okay. If you wanted someone to write a song about you, who would you pick? That's a good question. Uh, I think I'll go with um, uh, uh, Bruno Mars. Nice. Just some singer. <laughs> <laughs> You got the question, right? Like, yeah. okay. What is something you would want to change about yourself? Uh, I think I want to change about myself is that I don't know Okay. Um, simple question. Okay. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you want to live? Uh, 